high purpose and integrity and relying upon the guidance of the God of all of us, we can save freedom in America and go forward once again. I think. We'll return you now to New York. Governor Dewey spoke tonight from Buffalo, New York. His speech will be rebroadcast over another network tomorrow at 12.30 p.m., one half hour afternoon Eastern wartime. No matter what New Deal adherents have to say, your vote is your own. If you are registered as a Democrat, that makes no difference. In the privacy of the voting booth, you can cast your vote as you please. Tomorrow night, Governor Dewey will speak from Boston at 9.30 p.m. Eastern wartime and Saturday night in Madison Square Garden at 10.30 p.m. Eastern wartime, both over this network and other networks. Don't forget to listen to Governor Dewey tomorrow, Wednesday night, at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Wartime. Time for the presentation of Governor Thomas E. Dewey, Republican presidential nominee, was purchased by the Republican National Committee. The Mole Mystery Theater, usually broadcast at 9 p.m. Eastern Wartime over most of these stations, was canceled this evening. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs> program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> the makers of Johnson's Wax for Home and Industry present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. <laughs> you're shaking the mothballs out of your winter coat in anticipation of the months ahead, give a moment's thought to the finish of your car. You can't wrap the paint job up in woolens, but you can get it ready for winter with a thorough cleaning and polishing. Cold weather and rain and snow and ice are hard on the finish. Give it the extra care it needs with Johnson's Carnew. Carnew will remove the road grime and dirt easily without damage to the finish. Carnew will restore that beautiful showroom shine you probably haven't seen much of lately. And you'll gladly do the job yourself because Carnew is a real work saver. It does two jobs at once, both cleans and polishes with one application. You'll probably be driving your car for some time yet, so it'll still pay to take good care of it. Your dealer has Johnson's Carnew now. It's spelled C-A-R-N-U. One reason they call this time of year the duck season is that when you turn certain people loose with a shotgun, everybody had better. <laughs> Not to mention names, listen to a mighty hunter sounding off as we meet Fibber McGee and Molly. Ah, the thrill of it. Crouching down in the blind. Blind. Waiting for him to sweep over your head. And then the thunder of wings. And you raise your gun. Bang, bang, bang. I got him. Bang, bang. Put out. There goes one to the right. Bang. Oh, for goodness sake, Steary, put down that broomstick before you break every lamp in the house. <laughs> I'm sorry I busted it. But by George, if that lamp had been a duck, I'd have got it right through the white meat. <laughs> you realize what you just did, dearie? Sure, I busted the lamp. So what? Well, you broke that lamp that you won at the fairgrounds throwing darts at the balloon. And now you'll have to think up something else to give Aunt Sarah for Christmas. <laughs> My gosh And I'll never again be able to get anything so horrible so cheap I think you have the wrong attitude about Aunt Sarah McGee After all, she's the closest relative I have <laughs> She's the closest relative anybody ever had <laughs> Why, that poor old Bermuda She goes around all winter with chapped knuckles Because she ain't open-handed enough to get her gloves on <laughs> What you think about that? I prefer to change the subject Okay what time are you going duck hunting in the morning? What time am I going? You're going, too. You promise? Oh, now, McGee, just because in a moment of weakness... Now, 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 no welching, baby. Come on, Molly, it'll be fun. Just you and me. And Doc Gamble. <laughs> How on 
course, did you get the doctor to go? Blackmail or bribery? Why, Doc loves to go duck hunting. He says as a member of the medical association, it's his duty to take a crack at a quack. <laughs> How about shells? I thought shotgun shells were frozen. Well, they melted a few for the hunting season. <laughs> I found three boxes of them. And the main thing is, I found the ideal spot to shoot from. Nobody knows about it but me. I made a private dicker with the guy that owns the property to keep everybody out but my party. Oh, and where is this happy, I hope, hunting ground? Shut the door. What? Shh. Shut the door. All right. Oh, stop looking under the dab and port. There's nobody here but us. You don't seem to realize what it means to find an absolutely untapped hunting ground. I know guys that would stop at nothing to find this place. Shall I go over the walls for hidden dictaphones? That might not be a very... No, no. <laughs> nobody but I and the farmer and Doc knows what I know, see? Well, where is it? Where is it? It's at the North Fork of Sweeney Swamp. Sweeney Swamp? Shh. You betcha. I paid Sweeney five bucks for the exclusive use of it this year. And I gave him a handful of cigars to seal the bargain. Your own cigars? Certainly. Then I don't want to go. <laughs> By now, it's enemy territory. <laughs> oh, come on, Molly. Don't you think every wife ought to be a pal to her husband? Well, as I recall, duck hunting was not mentioned in the marriage ceremony. Well, doggone it, the ducks bring their wives. Well... <laughs> That does it. I'll go. When do we start? Doc's picking us up at 3 o'clock in the morning. 3 o'clock in the morning? Heavenly day. It takes an early worm to get the bird, doesn't it? <laughs> we leave here at 3. That gets us out to Sweeney Swamp and all set up by 5, see? Wait a minute. I haven't got a hunting license. Hmm. Well, you can get one next year. You come along this time and see how it's done. I'll take you seat shooting next summer and learn you how to handle a shotgun. What's it doing, dearie? Huh? I won't shoot anything I can't eat. And I never ate a skeet in my life. <laughs> Look, Molly, a skeet is just a hunk of clay. Aren't we all? <laughs> well, what I'm... Hey, where'd I put my duck call? Your what? My duck call that I carved out of a turkey bone. Or was it a turkey call I carved out of a duck bone? <laughs> no, it was a duck call I carved out of a turkey bone. I wonder... If, oh, here it is. What on earth do you use that for? It's the call the ducks with. It lures them in. They think it's the mating call of another duck, you see. And they swoop down to pitch a little wool. Listen Well, if that's a mating call and I was a duck, I'd stay a bachelor uh -huh. A little out of practice Listen to this Heavenly days, you got one Come in Oh, hello, Alice You didn't have to knock Well, I heard a funny noise and I thought maybe somebody was sick Hiya, pup That noise was a duck call, Alice Theoretically, it does to a duck what sheer stockings, baby talk, and Chanel number five does to a man. <laughs> it comes under the heading of love is a funny thing. <laughs> but what do you use this duck call for? We're going hunting in the morning, Alice. Ever do any shooting? No, but I had an uncle out west that was always shooting somebody. Mm. He was my mother's brother and our only outlaw in-law. <laughs> An outlaw in-law. Who did he shoot? Well, he shot a dentist for one. The dentist overcharged him, and our outlaw in-law said it was too much outlay for an inlay and gave him a lead filling. <laughs> Your uncle was probably just high-strung, Alice. Oh, he was. Ten minutes after they caught him. <laughs> well, I hope we won't disturb you when we leave in the morning, Alice. We're getting up at three. Oh, don't worry about that, Mrs. McGee. I sleep like a log. So does McGee. Like a log going through a sawmill. <laughs> Don't tell me you're staying home tonight, Alice. What's the matter? Our phone out of order? Oh, no, but this is my night to write letters to the servicemen. What do you mean, your night? Oh, well, us girls at the airplane plant formed a club to write to all the soldiers and sailors and Marines we know. We call it the G.I. Hope He'll Answer It Club. What do you do, Alice? Just give the boys the local chit-chat? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just tell them about what's going on, what plays and movies are playing the theaters and so on. Mm -hmm. Like about yesterday, I saw a cute movie at the Bijou. They call it Heavenly Days. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How'd you like the leading man, Alice? Oh, he was cute, but oh. he made an awful droop of himself in the picture. <laughs> I thought I'd die when he got thrown out of the Senate and went, oh, but I'd better not tell you, you might want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> we probably will, six or seven times. <laughs> and the man's wife in the picture looked a lot like you, Mrs. McGee. Oh? As a matter of fact, now that I think of it, they were using your names. Fibber, McGee, and Molly. Can you sue him for that? <laughs> oh, I suppose we could, Alice. 
But it might deprive millions of people of the joy and happiness and excitement and amusement of seeing the picture. <laughs> End of advertisement. <laughs> McGee? Never mind, Alice. I think that letter-writing club of yours is a wonderful idea. The only thing a soldier likes better than male is female. <laughs> yes, and you know what our club motto is? What, Alice? Write to a serviceman. One little letter can change his cares to a caress. Well, good hunting, Pop. <laughs> Billy Mills and the orchestra play How Many Hearts Have You Broken? going to bed now, McGee. Now, you go ahead. I'll be up as soon as I check this equipment. Now, let me see. I'm a shooting jacket, looking glass, three boxes of shells, mosquito lotion. What's the string on your finger for? Huh? Oh, my gosh. That was to remind me to, uh, to, hmm. Now, what was that on my finger to remind me? Lunch? Nope. You was already fixing that. Hip boots? No. No. I got them. Cigars? No. Game bag? No. Hunting license? No. Oh, doggone it. It was something that any guy out duck hunting would need. Now, what the dickens... Shotgun? Shotgun, that's it. <laughs> Much obliged, Molly. You say Beulah's putting up the lunch, eh? Yeah, I told her all about it and where we're going, and she offered to stay tonight and put up the lunch. I'll see how she's coming out. Oh, Beulah! Oh, Beulah! Somebody bleeding for Beulah? <laughs> Well, how are you coming along with the Bird Bangers Banquet, Beulah? Oh, if you mean the Duck Dodgers Delicatess, ma'am, I'm coming along okay. <laughs> yes, and I'm down to the K's on Mr. McGee's list of stuff. Hey, what did I ask for that begins with K? Case of root beer. Oh, yeah. yeah. You was really intelligent not to get yourself included this here expedition, ma'am. Getting up at 3 a.m. in the morning is foul enough without going after duck. <laughs> But I am going, Beulah. Oh, you poor dog. Mr. McGee, what for you want to drag that little gal out of that old mud swamp for? She ain't got no business Daniel Boone dogling ain't around no duck boat. Why, that's a lot of nonsense, Beulah. She'll love it. Why, my gosh, it'll be worth it just to see the glorious sunrise. Sunrise over Sweeney Swamp. <laughs> now, there is a postcard that would remain unbought in any drugstore. I don't know how I got finessed into it, Beulah, but you know Mr. McGee. He could talk the leaves off a major. She's never been duck hunting, Beulah. Next year, I'll bet we have to tie her up to keep her home. It gets into the blood. Yes, and so do pneumonia. <laughs> oh, I'll be all right, Beulah. I might even enjoy it. A far-fetched possibility if I ever heard one. <laughs> you wait, Molly. Once you get snuggled, nestled down in that old duck blind. <laughs> Incidentally, Beulah, you know how to make a duck blind? No, sir. <laughs> Tie a handkerchief around his head. Yeah, but how you gonna get close enough to... Oh, I can get him like a duck fly. <laughs> Love that man. Well, 
my clothes, you better turn in, Molly. It's almost 9 o'clock, so if we get up at 3, that gives us a good 12 hours sleep. 12 hours? Six for you and six for me. See, what time do you think we'll be back tomorrow? Oh, around noon or noon 30 at the latest. Well, come on. Molly. All right, dearie. Wake up. I don't want to go to school today, Mommy. <laughs> McGee, wake up. Wake up now. Uh, why don't somebody answer the phone? That isn't the phone. That's the alarm clock. Huh? Oh, oh. <laughs> now, don't go back to sleep. Dr. Gamble will be here any minute. Huh? What for? Am I sick? <laughs> no, no. We're going duck hunting this morning, remember? Oh, oh, yeah, duck hunting. Yeah, it might be fun. Let's let's go, too. We are going. Who is? Dr. Gamble. Oh, that's a good idea. You call him up and ask him while I take a little nap, Molly. Now, McGee, wake up. Come on, now. Open those sleepy little eyes. What's the matter with that dead ratted clock? I shut it off once. That isn't the clock. That's the telephone. Run down and answer. Mm, If we keep quiet, maybe they'll go away. (laughs) McGee. Come on, now. Run down and answer the telephone. I did shut it off once. That was the clock. Come on, now. Get going. I'll start getting dressed. Okay. Where's my slippers? Oh, here they are. Oh, I'm coming. I'm coming. Hello? Hello, Fibber. Harlow Wilcox. What's the matter? Anything serious? No. Why? Well, I just got in from a late sales meeting and found a message to call you on an urgent matter. Sorry to call you at 3 a.m., but I was worried. What's it about? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I called last night. See if you want to go duck hunting with Doc and me. Going out to Sweeney's Swamp. About 20 minutes. Sweeney's Swamp? Is that that marshland that runs along that stretch of woods? Uh, That's the place, Junior. Full of ducks. Lots of sport. Uh, Ducks commit suicide and climb in your bag. (laughs) You want to go? Not out there, pal. I can't stand going through those woods. Why? What do you mean, why? You expect me to enjoy the sight of all those beautiful oaks and maples and birches and elms standing there exposed to the weather and unprotected by even so much as a thin film of Johnson's wax? Yeah, Yeah, you get a lot of ducks. That's a good place. You know what it does to me, pal, to see a neglected piece of fine wood Mm -hmm. when it could so easily be protected with a wax finish. And when I say wax finish, I mean Johnson's wax, of course, which is the finest. Um, oh, hold the phone, Junior. There's been a nasty accident. I mean, uh, there's somebody at the door. Oh, well, I didn't intend to keep you waiting. I just wanted to say that with Johnson's wax... As the guy says, when the king of the cannibals ate one of his people, that guy's sure full of his subject. <laughs> come in, come in, come in, come in. Oh, oh, hi, Doc. Hello, Droopy. Why aren't you dressed? You told me seven times to be here at 3 a.m. sharp, and here I find you slopping around in a purple bathrobe like a dopey little somnambulist. Don't you call me a somnambulist, you big tonsil snatcher. (laughs) Fine lot of appreciation I get from you. Here I find three boxes of shotgun shells when they're scarcer than a sailor's pockets. And make a private deal with old man Sweeney for a private shooting ground, and you get antsy pants because I ain't sitting on the curbstone waiting for you. Why, you biological misfit... The only engagement you ever kept in your life was with a stork, and that trip wasn't really necessary. <laughs> Get me up in the middle of the night to go fishing with... Where's Molly? She's getting dressed, Doc. I had to come down and answer the phone. McGee, if I ever write my memoirs, and I probably will because every doctor is a frustrated author, the censors will never pass the part where I let you talk me into going duck hunting. I talked you into it. Yeah. Why you begged me to go? I... You said you liked to shoot ducks because they were so much like people. They are, too. Every time they open their bills, they squawk. <laughs> Why I ever let myself well, be talked... Well, good morning, doctor. Oh, hello, my dear. Why don't you whip up a fast pot of java while Millard the Mallard gets out of that Kingfish Levinsky bathrobe? <laughs> that I will, 
doctor, that I will. Go on, McGee, go get dressed. Okay, 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 I'm coming. I'm going. You put the, you pack the stuff in the car, Doc. I'll be down before you can... McGee, the telephone's off the hook. Oh, I'll hang it up, Molly. Go get your pants on, pixie puss. Okay. <laughs> Say, who on earth could be calling us at this hour of the morning? Search me, but they're probably hung up for now. Hello? Hello. And furthermore, pal, to drive through those wet, dripping woods and think how just one simple coat of Johnson's wax would protect and preserve them against... Who was it, Doctor? The Finnish ambassador. <laughs> well, where's that coffee, madam? Time to waste some... You know where you're going, McGee. It's as dark as the, as the inside of a horse. <laughs> Don't worry, baby. I'll know the place all right. I blazed a big tree where the headlights would pick it out. You would chop a hole in a tree, you little vandal. What? You're one of those people who travel around carving their initials on Mount Vernon. Every time you see a national monument, you start yelling, Leave us to face it. <laughs> Is that so? Well, yeah. by the... Hey, here's the place, Doctor. Huh? Pull off the road. Pull off the road. Pull off the road. <laughs> Pull off the road was superfluous advice, dearie. Most of that road was pulled off years ago. <laughs> I hope the Eagle Scout here knows where we are. Personally, I'm loster than I've ever been in my life. <laughs> Don't worry, kids. I know what I'm doing. You carry the lunch, Molly. I and Doc will bring the other stuff. All right. I hope those shotguns are not loaded. Why, certainly they're not loaded. We carry them with their breeches open, if you'll pardon the expression. <laughs> Ready, Doc? Lead on, McDuff. I got the stuff. Which way do we go? North, northeast, till we come to a big boulder. Then due west to the hollow stump, and then southeast by east till we stumble over a root. Then go straight north. Well, go ahead. Get started. Yeah. I'm feeling for moss on this tree, so I'll know which way is north. Ah, here's... Let go of my legs, stupid. <laughs> Excuse me, Doc. I thought you were a stump. Ah, here we are. Now stay close to me, or you might get lost. I can't see my hand in front of my face. Take it out of your pocket. Huh? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Now I can see it. Well, come on. Follow me. Hi-ho, hi-ho. It's off to work we go. Hey, 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 hey. Cut it out, Molly. You'll scare the ducks. I'll have to teach you about woodcraft, Molly. Yeah. The first thing you got to know is how to know directions in the woods. Hand me your compass, Doc. I haven't got a compass. Where's yours? Well, I haven't got one either. Well, anyway... Here. We... Here's a compass. Oh. I just thought it might come in handy. Oh. <laughs> Uh-huh. Anyway, you'll probably be pretty green at this outdoor stuff for a while, Molly. Pretty dumb about it. But after you get some experience... Hey, Doc, you got a cigar? No, never thought to bring any. My gosh, neither did I. I did. Huh? Here. Here's five apiece for you. Oh, thanks, Molly. Now, what were you saying, McGee? I was saying that proper equipment is the main thing to outdoor life. Just watch what I do and... Give me a match, Doc. I haven't got a match, McGee. Here. Here's a box of matches. <laughs> As I was saying, Molly, you'll probably feel pretty useless till you catch on to things. <laughs> you'll pick up a lot of knowledge, like how a duck always lands with the water, with the wind behind him. <laughs> <laughs> McGee, he lands with the wind in front of him. Oh, Certainly. Well, what did I say, behind him? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Anyway, hey, is this the big boulder where we turn? How would I know? I'm a stranger here myself. <laughs> turn your flashlight on it. I haven't got a flashlight. Here, use mine. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. Yep, this is the place. Now we turn right. Left. Oh, yes, left. <laughs> Just follow me, Doc, and don't be nervous. We won't let you get lost. You mean she won't let us get lost? <laughs> <laughs> I was lost. <laughs> <laughs> don't you worry, Doc. I know these woods like the back of my hand. You must have a pair of odd gloves on. <laughs> now, we better be quiet, folks. Don't want to scare the ducks. Uh, McGee. Huh? Would it be asking too much of you to keep the muzzle of that shotgun out of my left eye? He said it wasn't loaded, Doctor. Yes, I know. And I wish I had 50 cents for every slug I've dug out of people who said the same thing. Shh. Be quiet now. We're almost there. Oh, we are there. Yeah. So, this is a duck blind, huh? Yes, sir, and a good one, too, by George. And not a hunter within ten miles of us. Thanks to me. Thanks. Thanks. You're welcome. 
You see, I found this place myself and got the use of it exclusive. Well, we better load up, Doc. Hand me the shells. Hand you the shells? You're the one that was bringing the shells. Oh, my gosh, the oh. shells. What did I do with the shells? Oh, for... oh, this is awful. 17 miles from Here, home. McGee, I brought them. Hmm? <laughs> you left them on the hall table. Oh, well, <laughs> thanks, kid. <laughs> Here, Doc, take a shell. Thanks. Ought to be sunrise any minute now. My nose is turning pink. That particular sunrise has lasted 30 years. <laughs> hey, do I hear ducks? Huh? Listen. <laughs> That's one on you, McGee. They're traveling south by train this year. No, 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 no. I heard ducks. Listen. Ducks, all right, if I ever heard one, and I don't think I ever did. (laughs) It's light enough to shoot by, too. I'll try my duck call. Well, go ahead. Oh, can't find my duck call. I'd have swore I had it in my left pants pocket. Here it is, dearie. (laughs) You left it in the car, and I brought it. Oh, thanks. Now get ready to shoot when I call him, Doc. Mm Mm-hmm. McGee, is your hunting license good for hummingbirds? <laughs> Must have got some lint into it. I'll try it again. You have quite a repertoire in that thing, McGee. Can you play the web foot boogie? No. <laughs> we won't need it anyway. Look out there. There's thousands of ducks. Well, why don't you start shooting? You can't shoot them until they get off the water, Molly. That isn't sporting. No, we'll get plenty. Don't worry. Sure. 10,000 ducks and just the two of us shooting. I'll match you for the first shot, Doc. Okay, you got a coin? No, I haven't. Haven't you? Neither have I, no. I have. Here, McGee. Oh, Oh, now, Doc. I'm flipping. Head. Uh Uh-oh. Too too far. (laughs) Well, you take the first shot, Doc. I don't want to get my limit too quick. Okay, and before I forget it, McGee, accept my profound apologies for doubting your word. This is really exclusive. Oh, sure it is. I know what I'm doing. Not a soul within ten miles, and here look, we go. Look, boys, they're right. One side, McGee, who I like. Don't, don't. <coughs> who was that? Somebody down that way, about a hundred feet, McGee. He's got a lot of nerve busting into our private hunting preserve. Hey. Oh, they're both of that. Why, you, McGee, you said we had this place to ourselves. too bad if you still had to scrub your linoleum floors to keep them presentable. Those old Saturday down on the hands and knees days are gone and fortunately almost forgotten. Linoleum is better cared for. It's more beautiful, lasts much longer, and you save yourself hours of work. Thanks to Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. There's no rubbing or buffing with glow coat. You simply apply and let dry. The tough film protects the surface against dirt and wear, brings out the beauty of the linoleum colors and patterns. And because it's made by the makers of Johnson's Wax, you can always count on the uniform, high quality, and service of Johnson's Local. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to speak a moment to our friends in Canada and wish them every success in their seventh victory war loan drive. We know you Canadians will maintain your wonderful record for following through with individual purchases of victory bonds. History has shown that when Canada fights for a cause... The idea of failure is like the border between our two countries. Purely imaginary. Good night. Good night, all. This is Arlo Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson Wax Finishes for Home and Industry, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.